Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review The Hitman's Bodyguard. And this film is starring Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson, and that's basically all this movie has going for it. Now, when I saw the trailer for this, I got super excited because I'm thinking, you got these two actors together in the same movie, spending a whole lot of time together, it's going to be really funny, which it is, but that's about that's about it and this is supposed to be an action comedy and this is directed by Patrick Hughes and in terms of how he put this film together there were some interesting things that he did in terms of telling the story and how he incorporated flashbacks with voiceover and just the way that he did this slow motion and very stylistic ways of showing these flashback scenes kind of shook up how the story was being told throughout but honestly it didn't really help with the pacing because the first half hour of this movie is a drag and the issue is it takes up a half an hour to put Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds together and that was too too long and this movie should not have been two hours, to be perfectly honest. They could have trimmed this story down and made it a little more streamlined. And it does make the film drag at the beginning and the end. And in terms of the tone of this film, the tone's all over the place. Because there's really over-the-top, like, wink-wink kind of fun, I'm-not-taking-myself-seriously kind of movie throughout this film. But when it comes down to it, it tries to be a serious film a lot. And it fails at that really badly. And takes you out of the movie because you're just so jarring going back and forth. And in scenes, it goes from very funny to trying to be super serious, to trying to be emotional. And it never actually really hits you emotionally. It doesn't hit that mark where it's supposed to be. I feel for these characters. Maybe the only little tiniest thing is the interactions between Samuel L. Jackson and Sam Hayek, his wife. And those are really the only two things. And the, you do get to a sense of this budding friendship between them, but they try this other love angle with Ryan Reynolds and all this stuff that they're trying to stop. If this was just about this hitman needs to be taken from point A to point B, and Ryan Reynolds is working on protecting Samuel L. Jackson, that would have been perfectly fine. But the reason why and how they try to go deep into, like, he's trying to stop this evil dictator and all these evil things that he did and how dark he is and just didn't feel right. It completely takes you out of the movie. And from a visual perspective, cinematographer Jules O'Lotlin, it's okay. Some of the action set pieces were more inspired than others and how some one particular action sequence I thought was actually shot really well but a lot of this parts it's overly edited all over the place and it's just like well I can't tell what's going on or you're going too quickly or you're just jarring me all over the place and the CGI in this is horrendous it looks so bad it looks like they spent two cents on it which this film has a like a 30 million dollar budget so yeah it's pretty bad cgi and it just did it, it really took you out of the movie it's like wow that looks really bad and then you have writer tom o'connor now the story of this like i mentioned if this was just about ryan reynolds protecting samuel L. jackson and needing to take him somewhere I would have been fine with the story, but there is needless romantic subplot for Ryan Reynolds that just didn't feel like it actually hit. And then this whole entire thing with this evil dictator and trying to stop this evil dictator and all the evil things he did, it feels too serious, doesn't fit with the rest of the movie, and it's boring and doesn't really stick out. And in terms of characters, you have Ryan Reynolds' character and you have Samuel L. Jackson's character. And Selma Hayek, she does a fun job with her character, who's the wife of Samuel L. Jackson's character. But then, when it comes to action movies, I can be pretty picky and a bit of a snob with them, and there's certain things that you have to hit. Villain has to be a cool, interesting, standout villain. 
Gary Oldman's character in this was so boring, so bland, just like, I'm evil. Okay, whatever. And the henchman, so plain. Uninteresting henchman, completely forgettable. So basically beyond the two main leads, there's nothing really to dig into in terms of characters. Now the dialogue is really, really funny between Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson. They have some amazing dialogue. It's extremely funny. I laughed a lot during this movie. It's the only thing that kept my interest during this movie because it sure as hell wasn't the story, which is really disappointing because there's so many great action comedies out there and this one just wasn't it and kind of dropped the ball. And I mentioned to try to be serious when taking into account this dictator and what he has done and it really doesn't feel right and just doesn't hit the way it's supposed to and something that really bothered me is the music done by Atli Ovarsson it's so obnoxious and contributes so much to the terrible tonal shifts because it's like zany kind of music and then it hits this big swelling of super emotional music and it's like da 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 and like somber music it's like oh now I'm supposed to be to feel so sad and it's just so obnoxious and comes out of nowhere and hits you and just like wow this is completely taking me out of the movie and why the hell are you doing this I was enjoying that scene and then you ruined it you just ruined it and then when it comes to the acting Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson it seems like they're coasting along because it seems so easy to them. But they do such fantastic jobs in this, bring all the charisma that they can, the chemistry between each other. And I was disappointed by Elodie Young, Gary Oldman, they're really wasted. Selma Hayek does get her moments and she does stick out as a supporting character, which also in action movies you need a lot of fun supporting characters. And Selma Hayek was one of those for this film and she really brought her a-game but basically everyone else is like okay whatever my it does this have an, the it factor to be a great movie hell no was it really funny yeah but it was completely pointless and unengaging and didn't hit on the themes and didn't meet what it was trying to do and unfortunately i have to give the hitman's bodyguard a d